All right, hey sentiment community, what a day to start off the week here. A bloody Monday in crypto. Bitcoin did fall down all the way to 39.5K, uh, and that was one of the lesser falls among the many, many crypto assets out there that you're probably following. Um, many dropped 10% or more in just the past 24 hours. Uh, big retracements all around, followed by at least at the time of this recording, a very mild bounce. Uh, and the big question that I know is circulating all over social media right now is, are we going to see a quick recovery? Or is this kind of the beginning of a, a little bit of a concerning dip that might take us all the way until the April halving before things might look a little more optimistic? Or even will it go beyond the halving and prices were already baked in uh, with the anticipation that the halving would be a huge success. We know how that went for Litecoin. Uh, that was kind of a mild run up going into the halving uh, in the middle of 2023 and then a big drop and it was one of the worst underperformers after that halving completed. We know that the Ethereum merge had a similar effect where there was a little bit of a buy up back when Ethereum was around that $1,200 to $1,600 range got to the high end going up to the merge, and then after a successful merge, it dropped back down. So we're not gonna to talk too much about the halving, at least not yet. There's still a little under three months until that happens, but we do want to know what the immediate impact is of this drop uh, below 40K, all the way down to about 39.4 to 39.5K for Bitcoin's price, the lowest it's been since December 5th, I believe. Uh, about six weeks have gone by almost seven weeks since we saw a price level this low. So now the question is, are we going to see a quick bounce? So there are three main metrics that I like to look at, and sometimes I'll throw social dominance or social volume in there, but I'm gonna leave that out of this video for those wondering about it. I'll probably do another video on that specific metric very shortly so we can see how the crowd's actual reaction to this development is going. For now, what we're going to look at are just some of the objective mathematical metrics that I really like to take into account when judging how quickly a bounce may happen. So for starters, let's look at MVRV. And in this case, I'm looking particularly at the intraday MVRV. So we can actually look at things on basically a hourly basis. Uh, I'm kind of zoomed out right now to the last six months. So sentiment has defaulted to the last eight hour, or every interval is eight hours. Uh, but MVRV, for those who don't know how it works, the higher above 0% it is, the more risk the asset has of seeing a drop. You can see right before it had its big drop, uh, going into the, or actually I should say a day after the ETFs were, were approved by the SEC, the MVRV showed the average trading returns, we'll just, We'll go to the peak here on January 8th, a couple days before. It was at about 8.5%. The average trading returns were um, for any active address on the Bitcoin network that had been active in the past 30 days at this point. Uh, right after the ETF announcement on January 11th, it was down to 5.2%, but still in the positives, indicating there was still some risk of Bitcoin dropping. And then finally, it did see that big drop, and you can see this uh, MVRV here did drop all the way to negative two and a half percent and I've gone ahead and updated my mouse to a larger size. We dropped all the way down to uh, a little over five percent. It looks like about negative four point eight percent went up a little bit but it's actually been in the negatives for the last week or so going back to around January 14th or even 12th or so. Um, and now it, the MVRV is actually, it, it got all the way down to about negative 8.6%, which is actually the lowest it's been since August. We're looking at August 19th, the last time we saw this level. A little over five months have passed since we last saw this. So this is actually pretty monumental. Bitcoin had been enjoying such a nice party here with average trading returns consistently above the 0% line that people are not used to this at all. And it absolutely could be a short visit in the negative uh, range, which would indicate that there is less risk than usual at buying or adding onto your positions here. Um, 
but it's hard to say. That's why we have to combine some other metrics here, which is why I have the RSI, which is a great metric to take a look at. So the RSI is also known as the relative strength indicator, and it takes a look at just how much momentum is in the price patterns. If it's going down very aggressively, the RSI goes down significantly. If it's going up aggressively, the RSI goes up significantly. It's highlighted here in teal, so pay attention to that as I point things out here. You can see that the RSI got all the way up at one point to 96. Now the RSI is a 0 to 100 scale, with 50 being average conditions. So considering it got up to 96 on October 25th, that was a sign that things were probably going to cool off for a little bit. And it kind of did, but if anything, it just kind of flattened out for a couple weeks and then continued on its great surge. Finally peaked here again at 91, and then we started to see a bit of a correction. So as long as price is growing gradually, you'll notice the RSI doesn't really go up too aggressively and it kind of stays in this middle you know, 45 to 55 range. Sometimes it might go up to 60, but price w the price was still climbing pretty significantly, even though the RSI was pretty stable. But now, after a big drop, look at how the RSI has gradually fallen, got down below 50 right here on January 14th, and it was at about 41 uh, over the weekend. And after this drop to below 40K, the RSI has fallen all the way below 20. Technically, it's at 19.24 right now, which is an extremely low level. Uh, the last time is similar to what we saw with the MVRV. August 27th is the last time we saw things that low, and we could see how great of a time that was to buy Bitcoin. So that's a pretty encouraging sign that we should at least see some bounce but just keep in mind that the RSA, RSI could stabilize and get back up to 40 to 60 or so without needing to necessarily have a big bounce. It might just flatten out. It might just grow a little bit uh, in order to recover back to a middle ground. But I would still be intrigued uh, and expect a bounce here as long as the MVRV is well below 0% as it is now. It's not even in the zero to negative five percent range it's closer to negative ten percent so that's pretty deep uh, i set the axis for the 30-day mbrv at plus twenty percent all the way down to negative twenty percent we'll look at a few other coins in just a moment i picked five different majors so we could have a comparison to see which might be the best dip by candidate according to the math right now but before i jump over to ethereum which i'll look at next take a look at funding rate uh, in this case, I like to just look at the Binance funding rate, but we do have other examples like BitMEX, uh, DYDX, Deribit, um, and I think those are the other three we have at the moment. But what the funding rate is showing is we're actually just in a neutral territory right now. We did see a bit of greed here just prior, maybe five days prior to the actual top that we saw here uh, on the day the ETFs were announced. Uh, but it does look like the funding rate is neutral for now, so nothing too concerning there. Ideally, we'd actually like to see negative funding rate. This basically means that uh, margined and, and leveraged shorts are paying longs just so they could borrow and bet against the price. And when that happens, the funding rate is designed to always kind of gravitate back to neutral. So anytime it gets too extreme, there's going to be long liquidations, or at least the theoretically, the market will pull upward in order to liquidate these longs, or liquidate these shorts, sorry. And then the shorts that get liquidated just add rocket fuel to prices moving up higher. Just like eventually these some of these longs got liquidated and the downswing was more severe because the longs added downward rocket fuel to make prices dip more than they otherwise would have. So these are the three main short-term metrics I like to check out to see if a dip is coming. If I had to assess this just based on these three metrics, I'd say yes, there's an argument that a short-term dip could come. Maybe it goes back to 41K, maybe it at least stabilizes, but it looks like because especially the MVRV and RSI 
are this negative right now and there's no extreme longs, it would be a hard uh, argument to say that we're about to dip all the way to 35K and just go a, a straight plummet down. That could still happen gradually, but more likely we see just a mild dip. People start to get a little excited again. And again, I'll look at social metrics another time soon. But I think a little more excitement comes back in because the sentiment has gone quite negative just based on the anecdotal evidence I've seen. Um, so that needs to go away and people need to get a little more positive again. And when they go positive, that's when a further drop would happen. If they don't go positive, if, if everyone just stays pessimistic, the whales and sharks might just say, you know what, I'm going to scoop up a bunch at this price. Uh, I don't even know if it's going to go lower. And then we could see a bit of a boom. So uh, as backwards as that sounds, you want to see the crowd extremely negative right now. You don't want to see a lot of optimism and huge Telegram and Discord channels agreeing that it's time to buy the dip. You want to see the opposite right now. So that's just a conclusion on Bitcoin, which is, of course, the most important because its health has a reflection on these other four assets I've picked. Next up is Ethereum. And Ethereum had a pretty nice run. It was at one point up almost 25% against the price of Bitcoin, um, especially during the ETF craziness from last, I, I guess, one to two weeks ago. Uh, but it has dropped back down. It's a little above $2,300 at the time of this recording, which is still great if you got in back in October or so. But regardless, you can see that the average trading returns due to this dip has actually brought the average returns down for active addresses during that time to negative 3.3%, which isn't extremely negative, but it's still low enough to be the most negative we've seen since mid-October. So we're looking at a little over a three-month low in trading returns. Now, I would say something below negative 10 or even below negative 15 is that really juicy opportunity where you'll mathematically, more often than not, see a, a, a jump in price to even out all of the losses that are happening. But we're nowhere near that right now, so we could be in for a little more pain. We go back to Bitcoin here and we can see that that was at negative 7.9% for the 30-day MVRV. So Ethereum arguably is slightly more overvalued than Bitcoin, but both Bitcoin and Ethereum overall are at a less risky time than average based on the fact that short-term traders are losing right now. So looking at some other stats, unlike Bitcoin, Ethereum's RSI is sitting right there in the middle. Its relative strength index is showing it's pretty neutral, no extreme downturns like we saw for Bitcoin. You know, we did see a few big opportunities for Ethereum where on October 5th, uh, 14th, I should say, it was right around where Bitcoin is now at 19 or so. Uh, it even got as low as 11 back here on August 21st. All of these times were pretty solid times to buy uh, based on you know, the six month chart that we're looking at now. So both the uh, MVRV and RSI are looking much more neutral. MVRV is at least in the negative, but RSI doesn't really show any bullish divergence at all. If anything, 52 is at least just a, a tiny, tiny blip above average, indicating there's slightly, slightly more risk. And then finally, we have funding rate, which also looks neutral. For Ethereum just like we saw for Bitcoin. So that's fine. At, at the very least, we're not seeing greed take over. Uh, I would watch, you know, the next few days to see if we start seeing people excited to buy the dip and get a little bit greedy here. That would indicate, you know, like this, for example, right here. I'm just going to take these two off so we can see it more clearly. So right here, for example, look at how there was this extreme long and then prices immediately fell after. Same thing, eventually, actually almost every time, look at how there was a bright green line, extra longs going on, price falls. Extra longs going on, price falls. Extra longs going on, price falls again. And finally, we just have not seen any uh, signs of funding rate greed ever since, uh, going back to about January 3rd. So Ethereum looks fine, not as fine as Bitcoin. Uh, so far, it looks like the argument is that Bitcoin dominance might be on the menu, but let's keep going and look at 
XRP next. So XRP is seeing a very negative 30-day uh, MVRV. It's actually down at negative 11.3% for average trading returns. That is lower than Bitcoin's negative 7.9%. So objectively, the math says that XRP is at a less risky position than Bitcoin. Just know that this has to be taken with a bit of grain of salt, just like every altcoin, because XRP's price and market value does rely on Bitcoin being able to stay afloat itself. But assuming it does, XRP is looking like a pretty good candidate right now. You can see it actually went off the axis at one point back in August, where its 30-day average trading returns were way down at negative 27%. That obviously was a great time to buy, even with a little more volatility the upcoming month and a half or so. It eventually just soared like most of crypto did. Um, but the point is, when you see the 30-day MVRV way low like this, generally it's a pretty solid time to buy. Um, in addition to that bullish argument, it looks like the RSI is quite low, sitting at 35 out of 100. Not quite as amazing as the 19 that Bitcoin's showing, but it's under average, indicating there is an argument or, or a higher argument for prices to rise than a, a, an argument for prices to fall. And then finally, funding rate, again, just like the others, is very flat on Binance right now. And by the way, I like Binance only because it is the largest exchange, even with its with CZ uh, leaving the company, it still has the most volume by far, and uh, therefore it has the biggest weight uh, in terms of impact with like, you know, shorts being liquidated, having a bigger impact on the markets, or longs being liquidated, having a bigger impact on the markets. So keep that in mind. Overall, XRP actually looks like a pretty solid candidate right now for a bounce, if Bitcoin can be okay itself, of course. Next up, we have Cardano, and it looks like it's in a pretty similar position to XRP just by eyeballing it. Um, its 30-day is all the way down at negative 13.7%. That's even better than XRP's negative 11.3%. So we're in extreme territory here. We saw a similar drop back on January 7th. This was three days before the Bitcoin ETFs were approved. And then we proceeded to see a pretty nice bounce uh, for Cardano specifically. I remember during this time it was having a nice run and even having a few mini decouplings from the rest of the markets. But it did fall back down, and that's why average trading returns are still weighed down here at negative 13.7%. RSI is showing that it's in a better spot than average if you're bullish at about 40 right now, just not in an extreme spot like Bitcoin's 19. Um, and it's been one of the bigger underperformers for the last couple of years, uh, going all the way back to the, the big corrections that started in December of 2021. Um, you know, these past couple of years have been uh, rough for Cardano, if I just quickly zoom out, I don't want to digress too much, but you can see if I just take all these metrics off for a moment, um, just taking a, a rough ballpark of the last two years, Cardano is at negative 55% compared to almost exactly two years ago. Um, we could even look at Cardano's price versus Bitcoin by typing in price BTC here adding that to the chart. We'll just make it a line. And I mean, you can see how much it's, it's dropped just by looking at how high it was on the axis then versus now. And its price versus Bitcoin is down 60%. So that could just be an argument within itself, uh, being one of the biggest strugglers versus Bitcoin, but still being the eighth largest market cap asset it certainly hasn't gone anywhere. And of course, if you're a development activity fan, earlier today, we just put out a post uh, indicating that it is still at the top of the list in terms of notable daily development activity. So there's your argument for, Car for Cardano. It looks to be a good candidate for a bounce if Bitcoin stabilizes out, just like XRP. And then finally, I wanted to throw in Chainlink because I know there are a lot of fans of Link on Santiment as well as just uh, the X uh, community in general. 
So Chainlink is, it actually was uh, on a nice little run up until the correction started uh, maybe a day, day and a half ago. It had gotten comfortably over 15. Uh, and I think it, yeah, it actually got above 16, excuse me, $16.52. Um, and that's just on the zoomed out. Maybe uh, there's a more precise, I, I don't need to update the exact price, but I will say this. The MVRV is only at negative 2% because of the fact that Chainlink has overperformed compared to most other altcoins recently. Um, it's still in the negative, indicating there is an argument for a bounce to happen. The RSI is actually a little concerning. It's still up at 56, which is one of the higher RSIs uh, within the large cap altcoin space due to the fact that it's performing well. And in terms of the funding rate, it's in the exact same spot. All five of these examples today show that Binance's funding rate uh, for that respective asset is neutral right now. So not much to be worried about in terms of greed but there's also not as much to be excited about in terms of huge fear like these red candles. We'll see, you know, if Bitcoin really starts to trickle down to 38K, which I've seen a lot of people indicate is a potential support level for Bitcoin, we might start to see some shorts come in uh, because people react to generally what the most recent trend is. That's kind of how the crowd tends to, you know, revolve their their sentiment and beliefs in, in terms of where markets head next. So right now, uh, it looks like all is kind of quiet because people are indecisive, not quite sure what to make of this. But if the trend continues and we start to get impatient as a community and as a crowd, then the shorts will start to pour in and that will only add to Chainlink's argument to bounce pretty aggressively, but all of crypto. Um, if we see shorts all over the place. So keep that in mind. And I am dropping all five of these links in the uh, description for this video. So you can check them out, save them, bookmark them, whatever you'd like to do. Remember that you're only going to see real-time access if you are a Sandbase Pro member already or you're on a trial. So I'll leave a link so you can open up a trial and explore all of these metrics these links that I've shared, as well as just all of the other offerings that Santiment has here on this left column. You know, you can easily just um, pick anything like trading volume, add it to a new chart, and you've got more data at your disposal. Um, explore it, let us know what you think, uh, and I hope this was helpful, guys. It's a really cool thing to be able to look at the swing trading metrics uh, that kind of give you a day-to-day -day understanding of where prices are likely to go and not just focus on like a month to month or a year to year and everyone has different strategies so this is more for the short term traders this episode and uh, with all that said I wish you well uh, stay safe talk to you soon